ีเนี่ยมาแล้วก็มีเนเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเราอ่ะเรา These kind of teams come to come to get for tournaments like this. This is a combination yeah. of girls that are mainly about to play in the under 23 national championship series, which is in April. This Some year. of them, yes. And there's other girls, obviously from 19s or senior team mm. yeah, around the there's state. There's a very good player at second base, Belinda Wright. What's her name now? Belinda. That's right now. I get her mixed up. But anyway, she's an open player, a very good player. Um, coached her in the. Open women's uh, national five, team six, player. Yeah, yes, oh. national team player. There's a lot. There's a couple of good under 17s and under 19 players there. Uh, we've got uh, two sisters there. One's a pitcher. One's so it's a great catcher. experience for them to play with the Japanese girls oh. because the, the level the Japanese girls plays at is just yes. incredible. Well, you know, their their hitting is so consistent. As I said um, the other day. I've never seen a team in the two Olympics or any other World Championships hit as many line drives as they do, and uh, it's their training that is so much different to most the rest of the world because they train longer, maybe harder, and what they all do is have so much respect for older players or older coaches, which is good, and their parents, and grandparents. I, I just haven't seen it as much in other. Other areas, and it's such a cultural difference, isn't it? Yes. Tell us a bit about Michelle Edgerton, who's pitching. Michelle, um, been around for a while. She's been a good pitcher. Um, she's come through a couple of hard times. She's uh, represented, but she's uh, she's always trying, and uh, she's one of those players that will always give a hundred percent. She's uh, that was close. Change up. So would someone like Michelle be really challenged to throw to hitters like this? Oh yes, I think she would like this. She's one of them that would want to come in and say that she's you know pitched against the Japanese, some of the best players. So Michelle's challenge is actually you know, to, to stay with her own systems, to stay with her own patterns, and, and believe that she can throw spots and that sort of thing. Well, yes, uh, you know I, I haven't I did do a little bit of coaching with her about oh, I suppose about ten years now, and. Um, Oh, she was always impressive as that she would always do what you asked, and uh, and if it didn't work, she would still keep trying to do it. I mean, one of the things that so that was a 91 kilometer hour pitch. So is that is that like near the top of her range? Do you think? Oh, well, I'd say that she was usually around the 96 average. Um, she had got a oh, <laughs> great piece of the ball. Good work with the shortstop. 
It's marvellous too how quick and fast in their reactions the Japanese are. So that was a good uh, innings for them. So our oh, the scoreboard's scoreboard. not quite keeping up with this here, but um, it looks like it's 1 0 at the bottom of the first inning to um, uh, yeah. Toyota Red Terriers. Can't tell you too much about their pitcher at the moment, I'm afraid, but uh, this is Sayugi Yamane. And. Um, Barry, from what we've seen of their pitchers, they're they're obviously all speed is up. Um, got a lot of movement, but it's a great location. Yeah, well, a lot of it is because they're playing against some younger players and players that are not quite up to the open standard. This is where the open women's team makes a big difference as far as they've been up against pitchers and batters like, like this team. I think the... Uh, the big thing that they'll get from this, and a lot of players today start thinking about their own style and everything nowadays because, you know, it's uh, it's not like years gone by where, you know, you're the best and that's it. Now they know that they've got to improve in different areas. So we've got the designated player Tash Young uh, for New South Wales Invitational. I heard coming up to bat here. Yeah, she's a... Uh, right hander plant very close in the box to the plate that's pretty brave facing some of these 97 kilometer yeah, pitches yes and i think some of our infielders especially oh bad luck just came back on her legs in the box tempted bunt um is, is getting ready to bunt when you're facing some of these higher speed pitches more challenging very much so but if you notice the Japanese players, what they do is they aggravate, they get, they, they get it more in line early. So then they do it the same time, all the time, whether the pitch is slow, but it's it's when they focus on the ball. So their preparation is much earlier. And yes. Much more specific. yes. Again, we're seeing these Japanese catchers framing the pitches. Incredible. Yeah, very much so. And they all always ask. Too wide, too high, if it's a ball. But they do it in such a nice way, don't they? <laughs> yeah, very polite. Not, not like some uh, players. So that was an 81 kilometer an hour changer. Uh, got her a little bit uh, fooled on that one, Barry, but... Uh, So for Japan Red Terriers, this is a training camp getting away from the uh, end of the Northern Hemisphere under and uh, for Paul it's still pretty challenging up there condition-wise for them. I'd love the time down here in Sydney because the opportunity to train and play some of these games in the warmer weather here. Uh, obviously a good transition and forward into the competition period but we also believe that this fits in the category of play have a look at what we're doing. Look to see where the the areas of improvement or requiring improvement are. Not New South Wales girls getting some bat on ball, but uh, can't get past the the uh, Red Terriers' defence at the moment. To be understood, because not only are the pitchers good, but the, uh, the defenders backing them up. Are very quick, very sharp. We've got Nicole Michaels up to bat for New South Wales, number 18. She's the catcher. Foul 
Bomb away. Seventy-eight kilometer an hour change up. She got out in front of. Nicely taken out there in left field. So New South Wales girls getting some bat on the ball. Early morning here in Sydney at Blacktown International Sports Park which of course was Blacktown Olympic Park for the Sydney Olympics. This is where softball was played in 2000. The venue is incredibly supported by Blacktown City Council. Who, uh, always, they, they sort of adopted the sport. They're always here to help us make sure the grounds are in great condition. And that's reflected in some of the original or initial feedback we've actually had from the Japanese uh, delegation and certainly the Japanese players and certainly the couple of star American players that are in the Japanese team. They're all highly supportive, highly positive of the, the grounds here. For those that haven't had a chance to visit Blacktown, it's a four uh, diamond complex. Great warm-up facilities for pitchers. Big bullpens on diamond one here. Um, and for those that had a chance to listen to the games last night, you would have been aware that Foxtel covered the, uh, the game last night. Um, so it will be on early in March on Foxtel. You can check uh, Foxtel guides for softball coverage. And obviously also look to the Softball Australia website for information about when that, um, when that game will come to air. Again, for those that weren't there last night or weren't listening in last night, uh, we had a big celebration of uh, the 50th anniversary of the 1965 Australian women's team winning the, the world championships, beating the Americans um, in the final of the softball tournament back then. And the ladies from that era were here. They threw out the first pitch. They uh, celebrated hard with the, the rest of the crowd that was here. And as soon as all the formalities were finished at the start of the game, the, the, the lights went out around the ground. So we had a, that's not a bad start for a um, second or so pitch. That's a home run over left field fence, line dry home run. See the Japanese team come out with their little celebrations. And that was Mika Suzuki who hit that home run over the fence. So first baseman here, Ikaru Machida, is up to bat. Richardson starts with a cold strike down low. 92 kilometers an hour pitch. Foul away. The cheetah quickly goes in the hole two down, two strikes against her. For those that are close by, uh, Blacktown out here, don't forget there's a second game of uh, the Aussie Spirit playing the Toyota Red Terrier at so 12.30 Sydney time, which is Australian Daylight Saving Time. And it should be an exciting game here this afternoon because we saw some of the, the best pitching around last night, both from the Australian girls and uh, obviously from Japan. And the Red Terriers bought their gun pitcher in towards the end of the game just for a little bit of a 
roll the arm over, and her rolling the arm over, this is Monica Abbott, of course, and her rolling her arm over at 116 kilometers an hour, thank you very much. And some great location stuff, some incredible speed. Anyway, we've got uh, Machida batting, and uh, she's now got a two and two count. There's nobody out. Runs obviously scored already with the home run over left field. Michelle Edgerton. Michelle's regularly in that 94, 95 kind of area. Cheetah on a turn two. High fly ball just going foul at right field, taken just over the, uh, the foul line. So that sheet is retired. Kyoko Baba, the catcher, is up for the Red Terriers. Strike one out. This is down inside low. Back down for Sylvia is also skinned infields. Grass outfields. Nice pitch there. 76 kilometer an hour changeup. All that Baba could do was have a look. We're still getting an eye in this morning. The Japanese team uh, trained a solid session uh, for two hours prior to this game this morning. It's been their work ethic for the week that they've been here already. I think on the first day of competition on Friday, they had a, about a four hour training session in the morning. Followed by lunch, then another warm up, and then two games that evening. And, uh, just turned, came out the next day and kept doing the same thing again. And two balls, two strikes. Here, there's one down. First runs in for Japan. Kyoko Baba, the catcher, complete. Okay, fly ball out there to right center. It's going to produce a stand up double. to the top of the lineup for Japan, Yukimi Chikyo, who today is playing left field. Watch that change up. And a cold strike, just facing two strikes here. South Wales has got uh, 
a very fast runner. They're all, all the Japanese players are fast runners, but a fast runner up there on two. A bit of a challenge to see if they can handle that runner or stop her from advancing. Nice contact over the head of second of uh, center field, one bounce into the fence. So a run scores for Japan, another stand up double for Chikyo. For Japan, number seven uniform uh, center fielder, China Sukamoto. She's come up ready to swing. Michelle Edgeton pitching for New South Wales. There's been some other players out there warming up. So, We may have a situation where New South Wales might be doing some splits in this game. Side for a ball of one and one. One out, runner on two. Edged and pitching to Sukumoto. Fly ball to uh, just left of center. So Sukimoto gets a stand up double and Japan scores another run. Japanese bats finding the ball pretty regularly here. And what we've been seeing for the last couple of games from this group is that um, once they open up and start hitting, they, they just keep capitalizing on the runners they get on base, they keep moving people around. Keep making contact. We've got Bill Gates, head coach from New South Wales Invitational Team, coming out to have a chat in the show at the moment. Time to regroup a smidge or maybe make a decision about is it time to bring the next pitcher in. Coach Gates is a long term coach around Australian softball, let alone New South Wales softball. He's coached at all levels of the game. Brings a lot of experience to this team taking on the Japan Toyota uh, Red Terriers here in Sydney this morning. Well, Michelle's staying there. Bill's sent some words of wisdom and um, see whether she can hold back some of these Red Terrier bats. We've got number nine, Haruma Furusawa, up at the moment, and she's the shortstop. Actually, she sorry, she's the third baseman. Edged into first hour. One out, runner on two. Shell's been getting quite a bit of value from that change up. Didn't quite get it there this time. And this pitch gets the outside. Looks like our New South Wales catcher has been watching some of these Japanese catchers with their framing. It's Nicole Michaels. It's behind the plate for New South Wales. Oh, 76 kilometer, a big time change up, swung all over the top of it. For Osawa, in a one and two situation. Ground ball gets through short. Advances the run of the third. Able to turn it into a double. Three nil to the Red Terriers at the moment.
Erina Yamamoto, the designated player for uh, the Red Terriers, is up. First pitch makes contact, pop flies it to center field. Ball's taken there, runner tags up. Gets home and the other runner gets to third. Very professional unit, they're just constantly looking to advance runners, they're just constantly looking to do their individual jobs as hitters and runners. It's a great level of intensity, it's a great learning point for the young New South Wales team here. And lots of the other young teams that have come out to watch this morning. Okay, we've got number 22, Mana Atsumi for Japan. She's their shortstop. Atsumi's got a runner on three to try her advance. Two out, runner on three. Atsumi watches the strike. Oh and two count. Two down, runner on three. Edgerton misses away low. One ball, two strikes. Runner still on three. Let's see how good this run scoring machine the Japanese Toyota Red Terriers is. Here's a fly ball, which is just out of the reach of the center fielder, so obviously run scores, and it's another stand-up double. Brings up number 27 for the Red Terrier, Saki Yamazaki, who is their right fielder. Two down, runner on two, new hitter, Yamazaki. Makes contact straight away with a line drive, going bounce to center field. Throws cut off by the pitcher and scores another run. So the Japanese bats are singing again this morning. We've got number two uniform, second base player Mika Suzuki. Up to bat, she's got a runner on one, there's still two down. Makes contact with the first pitch. Single first. Runner. Oh, I think we're about to see a change here, Mr. Coach Gates is just bringing out a new pitcher. Now right, we've got Ashley Bruce pitching uniform number nine for New South Wales Invitational Team. Watch a little bit of her warm up here. Ninety-one kilometer a pitch last pitch. Right hander. Short of stature. If we were to see uh, Monica Abbott come out right now, you'd uh, see what six foot eight looks like. Okay, so Ash Bruce has got the job of stemming this flow of runs from the Japanese Toyota Red Terriers bats. Two down, six runs in. Runners on one and two. Hikoru Machida batting for the Red Terriers, first baseman. Hey. 
Big time change up there, didn't tempt her. One ball, two strikes, two down. Runners on. One and two. That's over the fence. Over center field's head, over the fence. Um, three run home run. A little ceremony again. I've seen quite a few of them. They're um, not particularly big women, but they're very strong and they're obviously very technically good with their hitting. So the ball finds the fence here at Blacktown once again. Nine runs in. Brings number 24 catcher Kyoko Baba to the plate for the Red Terriers. Home plate umpire today, Andrew Ronflesh. Highly regarded international umpire from Australia. Ash Bruce throwing here. Catcher Baba hasn't been tempted yet. Two balls. Two down. One bounce to a deep fielding left fielder. Got the ball back in quickly, restricts Baba's hit to a single. Big time two down rally here going for the Red Terriers. I haven't even seen any two down rally caps going, but uh, looks like Japanese coach is going to make a change. Japanese coach for Kudo. Like Japanese coach. Coach Itsushi Fukata. Bought a runner in, pinch runner in. Rita Yamashita has come in as a runner. Everybody's happy. We're going to keep on going here. We've got a new hitter as well in Mami Tanaka for the Red Terriers. So Ash Bruce has got another little challenge here. She's got to figure this one out. It's two down. Got a runner on one. This kind of situational practice is, a, is great for the Japanese team at their stage of preseason. It's great for the New South Wales team in terms of uh, real scenario solutions or having to come up with solutions. So one thing they know for sure is that the team there train playing against this morning isn't going to play it easy. Okay, so Mami Tanaka. Nice first throw. Two down, runner on one. Oh. Runner steals second, but gets the ball in the head for her for her uh, efforts. Looks to be okay though. Runner's ready to go. One ball, two down. Runner on two. I think that means this runner's fast.
Two balls, runner on three, having stolen second, got hit in the head, but then having stolen three. Nine nil at the moment here. A cold strike in there for Ash Bruce. To knock him batting. Foul down that left field line. Full count pitch. This is low. Japan's got a runner on the corner. Corners, one and three. Two down, rally continues. Next hitter for the Japan Toyota Red Terriers is number seven. Shina Tsukamoto. Well, I think we're getting the clinic here this morning. Getting a chance to see a lot of running plays. Challenging this young team from New South Wales. Tsukamoto. He is facing a one-strike situation. Runner out on two now. Runner on two is Nami Tanaka. Foul down the left field line there by uh, Sukumoto. She's facing two strikes. Two down, 10-0 at the moment. We're at Blacktown International Sport Park. Sunday morning in Sydney. Ash Bruce misses high. One ball, two strikes. Runner on two. Japanese coach hasn't sent her yet. Probably a little bit strange. <laughs> I leave the shot out here on the field for a little bit just to sort of see how this Japanese team sets up the advancing the runner job that they do. Hit and run, but that's some kind of hit. That's a line drive over the head of the left fielder up to the fence. Stand up double for her, scores another runner. Brings to the plate Haruna Furasawa who is the third base player for Japan to a Red Terriers. Two down, run run two. Strike outside. Great strike, blind drive. Past the right fielder, center right plug. She gets a stand up double, scores another runner. 12 in. Japan makes a change for the runner. No, sorry, she's back out there again for a start. 
Number 19 for the Red Terriers, Arena Yamamoto, who is the designated player, comes in. Still two down, 12 runs in, runner on two. We're getting a little bit of rain here at um, Blacktown now. goes. Slight fumble from the catcher there. Kept the ball in front of her, but not sharp enough to stop that really uh, over alert runner. Runner on three. Two balls. Two out. Brief shower just stopped. Hopefully that'll be the case for a while. Arena Yamamoto is batting for Japan. Opportunity to bring the runner in from three. Pitching coach Heather McCann comes out with a towel for Ash Bruce. Heather McCann played for Australia on multiple occasions, one of the, the named players in Australian softball. Brings lots of experience to the job of coaching this young New South Wales team. Yamamoto. Line drive over the head of center field, over the fence. Another two on home run to the Red Terriers. Incredible line drive home run. New South Wales team's getting a, an education this morning about where not to throw it, but I have a suspicion that there's probably not too many places that they haven't tried throwing it. Coach Gates comes back out again. I think we might be in for another pitching change here. Maybe just a little conversation. Longest two down rally I've ever seen. We're 14 runs now. Still in the second inning. Coach Gates is happy. Having a conversation with uh, Mr. Ryan Flush, the head, head umpire. Game goes on. At number 22, Mana Atsumi at bat for the Toyota Red Terriers. Nobody on base. That last hit cleaned up the bases. Two run home run over center field. Interesting challenge for Ash Bruce now, pitching to some high quality hitters, but with the ball a little bit wet. Atmosphere very heavy. Humidity right up. This is outside again. Two balls. 14 nil out here. And Red Terriers versus the New South Wales Young Invitational Team. Ground ball, second base. Finishes the innings. I think the New South Wales girls might be saying, thank goodness. 14 nil after two here at Blacktown International Sports Park. Watching the Japan Toyota Red Terriers playing in the 2015 Softball Australia Down Under Series. Later today, the Japan Toyota Red Terriers will play against the Aussie Spirit, the Australian women's softball team. Strong game last night with some great pitching that we saw. Japan put Australia away 5-0 in that game, so there may be a little bit of a feeling of wanting to get back with that today. So that game is being live streamed here at 12.30 on Softball Australia Productions YouTube site. To find us, all you got to do is go to YouTube and put in SAL, Softball Australia Limited, SAL Productions, and you'll find the Softball logo come up. 
And you'll see the other games that have been played in this series. Watch them on that uh, YouTube channel. And obviously also keep up to date watching the, uh, the live streaming for the games, for the games that are Just had a visit from one of our scorers here, just making sure that uh, the 14 mil was the right number. New South Wales Invitational team up here with a chance now to see if they can make a little bit of a dent in that Japanese lead. And number five, Danny Levito up to hit for New South Wales. This is a 97 mile an hour, so 97 kilometer an hour uh, pitch there. Followed by 96, not much time in between. Both of them just missing on the inside. Daniel Levito for New South Wales. I think our part of Flesh might have seen that one as a Pretty good quality strike. Followed by another 97 kilometer an hour pitch. Tough business this game. So Yuri Yamani pitching for Japan. Three, two. 97 kilometer an hour pitch outside. She couldn't catch up with it. First run, first out for New South Wales Invitational Team. <laughs> Top of the order for New South Wales, Linda Barnes. Balls, one down. This is outside, ninety four kilometer air pitch, three and one. One away for the New South Wales invitational team. Great hustle there. That ball was on the warning track, probably uh, caught around about just a meter inside the fence. So right fielders made easily 40 meters of ground there to make that catch. There's no way she was even looking at the fence. It was just the ball. Okay, we got Lindley Somerville, number 11, from the South Wales team. And there's New South Wales Invitational Center Fielder. Next contact there, gets a little blooper out there in the right. Second base comes back to make the play. Three down for New South Wales. Weren't able to stretch the inning out very far. Fourteen nil here for the Japanese Red Terriers. Ash Bruce coming back out to take on the Japanese hitters again.
Coach Gates having a long conversation with his battery. Working on some things that can take away from this game. Situation like this, the challenge is okay, so what can we do? Ash can stick with her system, stick with her rhythm. Work her location. Try to stay within what she does as opposed to pitching against reputations. It's only a hitter with one bat. Okay, settling in for another uh, probably hitting exhibition from the Japanese team. Number 16 for uh, the Red Terriers coming up to bat is Camille. Uh, Could actually be Camille Ma. Sorry, I can't quite read the, uh, the number there. Coming off the bench for Japan. Ash Bruce throwing here. This is outside low. Oh no, got a cold strike out of that. And Carl Ryan flushed, thought it was a good pitch. Wow. 75 kilometer out changeup. I think she remember throwing that pitch to that Japanese there for a while. Deep fly ball to center field. Center fielder had to make a big movement back, put the ball over his shoulder. Nice play. First out there for Japan. Brings to the plate uniform number two. Mika Suzuki, second base player. One down top of the third inning here. Great hustle there from the Japanese runner. Rolling ground ball to shortstop, makes a regulation play, but just not quite quick enough to, to beat the Japanese runner. They're fast. Brings to the plate number 20 for the Red Terriers. This is Nakagawa, Naomi Nakagawa, coming off the bench. One down runner on one for the Red Terriers. See if she can advance this runner. Does with a nice hit, safe hit, little blooper probably, you might call it, to, uh, wow. Wow. That's the runner on one. A little lapse of concentration from someone there, or maybe didn't quite read what had happened to the ball. Red Terry's get their runner to three, two down. Brings to the plate. Number one for the Red Terriers, Rita Yamashita. Notice that she actually bowed into the umpire. I suspect Coach Runflesh is, uh, umpire Runflesh has seen that overseas before, but doesn't get that too many times from men's softball here in Sydney. Cold strike on the outside. One ball, one strike, there's two down. Red Terry's got a runner on three. Yamashita at the plate. Just misses on the outside. Two balls and a strike, top of three. Sorry, bottom of three. We're on 14 runs ahead here for the Red Terriers. Oops. Runner didn't even have to slide. When 
New South Wales players, as I said, the ever-present threat of the quick-running Japanese runners. The level of intensity this team shows is very impressive. So, again, if you're anywhere near the ground, you might want to come down and watch the game. It's 12.30 this afternoon, which is the Australian senior women's team. I think we might have seen a... A game. Yeah, game's done. It's 15 nil in the middle of that third inning for Japan. So, entertaining game for uh, the people that were here to watch uh, good technical softball. Um, New South Wales Invitational didn't quite have the pitching strength to to, to challenge the Red Devil, the Red Terriers. You can watch these games on the Cell Productions YouTube channel. You'll also, through the week, be able to see some more little snippets, some interviews with some of the Red Terriers uh, American professionals. Monica Abbott uh, had some very interesting conversations with us yesterday, as well as uh, Natasha Watley. Uh, very <coughs> Intelligent, very experienced players, nice opinions about a range of things, and particularly about the fact that they're full time professional softball players. So, there are certainly people to watch out for and follow. Okay, so we'll finish this broadcast now, and at uh, 12 30 Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time, you'll find the game between the Red Terriers and the Aussie Spirit. <laughs>